Good morning. Please stand if you are able and join with us as we sing our first hymn, number 347, Spirit Song.
Please be seated. We welcome everyone this morning to Faith United Methodist Church. It is our joy to have you all here with us this morning. We would like to extend our special welcome to you. Thank you very much for being part of our worship and fellowship. We have a few announcements as we begin our worship service. If you have a prayer request that you would like us to pray about, you may drop your prayer request card in the in the offering box or call or send an email to the church office during the week. Sanha has an announcement. Hello everyone. So I actually have a couple of announcements for today. Uh, first, today is our Super Bowl Sunday. I hope you're really excited to have some delicious soup today. We also have our youth members serving us, so watch out for them as they give your soup today. Uh, we also welcome any donations, and any donations we, see, we receive today will go straight into funding our youth activities. But there's also something else going on today for Super Bowl Sunday. It was a fun idea that Pastor Charles suggested, and I think it's so much fun we decided to do it. We're going to have, basically, a Super Bowl raffle but this raffle will not be just a simple raffle. Instead, I printed out some tickets for today. And if you take a look at it, when you go to the fellowship hall, it'll say, who will win the Super Bowl? You will be casting your vote and then putting it into the corresponding basket. And whoever wins the Super Bowl, I will be taking the names out of that specific basket. So if you think the Eagles will win, write down your name Circle eagles, put it into the eagles basket. Same thing if you believe the Chiefs will win. Uh, there will be a couple of prizes, and it's going to be one per person. So please take a ticket when you go eat during fellowship and just put it into the basket. On to the second announcement. Uh, we are planning our youth bully night on February uh, 26th at 1 p.m. Now, I've already contacted a bunch of parents about this, but if you... And your family and your youth member wish to join us for the event, please let me know as soon as possible. I need to know exact numbers to reserve a spot. We can always add more numbers later, uh, but we can't guarantee that the lanes will be open if you come in late. So please let me know, uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know. A new, a new adult Bible fellowship video class led by Mel and Nancy Gears starts today at 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. in the media room. Bring your fellowship food into the media room and eat while we begin our study. Choir practice for the Good Friday Cantata and Easter begins today from 11.45 to 1 in the sanctuary. Everyone is welcome to join, 
the, choir, the choir and be part of Christ's passion and resurrection in music. At this time, we would like to celebrate birthdays. When your name is called, you may stand or stay seated. Lulu Fabros and Rachel Kim. Today's altar flowers are given to the glory of God by Natty Alcantara with thanksgivings for the eight-year celebration of her grandchildren's birthdays, Isaac and Elizabeth. For those who are able, please stand for the passing of the peace, but please stay at your pew and greet only with your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Please remain standing for the call to worship. Gathered in the name of the Jesus Christ, inspired by the Holy Spirit and blessed by God, we come to worship one holy God. Uh, o oh God, our own God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. Your majesty is the music of the starry skies, yet even children of dust can sing your praises. In the name of the healer, the provider, and the enabler, let your gratitude and joy be known. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from our from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. You call us to be servants of Christ and stewards of your mysteries of God. Yet we resist the basin and towel of discipleship and hesitate to wash others with the waters of our baptism. We shy away from the mysteries of the gospel and settle for comfortable truths. We know it is required of our stewards that they be found trustworthy. Yet we are seldom worthy of the trust you place in us. Bring to light the things how hidden in darkness as in Christ. You forgive us our sin. Let us be in silent confession. Hear the good news. Christ died for our sins and rose again that God may free us from the tyranny of judging others to live fully in the power of God's grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, God forgives your sins and offers you a transformed future. Live fully into God's grace. Glory to God. Amen. seated. Well, good morning, Faith Church, and welcome to Mission Month 2023. Before we get into our first local mission, our ushers have your Faith Promise pledge cards. If each family will please take one, Go home and pray over it and return the one that says, my faith promise, please tear off. This is between you and God. You don't have to put your name on it. 
The only reason you're bringing them, the one back to us is so we can pray over all the cards. And the other card you need to keep to remind you of what you've promised. And there's, everybody's going to help the ushers today. In the pocket in your pew, there might be little blue cards. Check your pew. If there are little blue cards, take them out of the pocket, put them on the seat so that the ushers can toss them at the end of church today. The new color is green. And the counters and bookkeepers are asking you to use this when you make a payment towards your pledge. You fill out how much and to who on the card, put it in your envelope with your check. Don't write in the memo on your check, along the edges of your check, along the edges of the envelope, fill out the card. If you want extra cards, see the ushers. They will always have a stack of them. You can take a bunch home. That way you'll have it when you get to writing your check. Please, bookkeeping is difficult enough. If they can't read what you want done, we end up calling you and bugging you. Okay, nagging is okay and done for today. Any questions? See me after church. Today we're talking about DuPage pads. In 2022, DuPage pads served 329 individuals who were homeless and through pads was able to obtain stable housing. Of those people, 140 of them were protected from a domestic abuse situation, and that's why they had left their homes. Pads will put them up, get them legal help, and make sure that they're safe away from that situation. They took care last year of 17 veterans who re turned out to be homeless, 113 families, and of those families, 287 children. 1,504 people. And what they've done is, if anybody knows Downers Grove for the last, hmm, I don't know, I can remember way back, Red Roof Inn on Butterfield Road in Finley, well, they went out of business which the police department probably threw a big party because they used to be a real problem. PADS has bought the building, remodeled all of those, apart those rented rooms, and now if someone needs an emergency placement, they can put them in an apartment right there at the old Red Roof Inn until they can find permanent housing. They get fed, housed, they can lock the door. No one is going to break the door down. And the children even get put into the school system so that they don't miss any school. And they, this, is, this is the biggest functioning homeless organization in DuPage County. And they have contacts to make sure they have food for all these people when they bring them into the uh, place on Butterfield. They had 94,946 nights of emergency shelter just in 2022. So it's something to think about. And we have further stuff as the month goes on. Yes, we also have people out of the country that we are helping. But we wanted you to understand that this is a local problem too. So we'll have a booklet for you with all of the missionaries, local and abroad, before the end of the month. 
So you don't have to turn that promise card in right this moment. You need to think about it and pray about it. And when the booklets are available, read about it. We'll see you next week. Uh, hello again, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to continue our series of messages on the Ten Commandments. And we're going to go over the Seventh Commandment, or how I nickname it, the commandment that makes parents all uncomfortable to teach to their kids. Now, it's a hard commandment to talk about, but it is important to discuss. The Seventh Commandment is, you shall not commit adultery. Now, what is adultery? Well, kids, if you had listened to my, uh, the last time I talked about this commandment, I said this is a commandment that's hard to explain to kids, but that doesn't mean you can't understand it somewhat. To commit adultery very simply means to take someone else's wife or husband. Now, even though, kids, you may have never heard of that word before, you already probably know that's not a good thing. <laughs> I don't need to explain why this is a bad thing. And like the commandment of murder, Jesus does go into more detail about it, just like the, uh, but I wanted to talk about something else. Remember that all the commandments are about love, loving God and loving our neighbor. Now, it should be easy to see why committing adultery is not loving your neighbor. Taking someone else's wife or husband is not how you show love. It is a sacred relationship that we need to treasure but how does this commandment show love to God? Well, the first obvious thing is, of course, obeying God's commandment shows love to God. But there's more to that. Do you remember, it's been a little while, when we talked about the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. In that commandment, I said that God is our heavenly father. So if you don't honor the relationship with your parents, then you are dishonoring God. Well, in the Bible, God actually uses a lot of different relationships to describe God's relationship with us. For example, Jesus calls us his brothers and sisters in Mark 3. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. In John 15, Jesus also calls us his friends. I have called you my friends because I have made known to you everything I've heard from my father. So now, we have to think about our relationship with our siblings and friends and how those relationships show love to God. If we dishonor the relationship with our siblings and with our friends, then we dishonor God, who is both sibling and friend. <clears throat> but what about husband and wife? Now, I'm sorry if this makes you uncomfortable, but we do have that sort of relationship with God. In Isaiah chapter 54, it says, for your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. In 2 Corinthians 11, Paul says to the church in Corinth, I feel divine jealousy for you. For I promised you in marriage to one husband, to Christ. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, it's easy to read the seventh commandment as God telling us to just love our partner. But that's not the only thing. Rather, our relationship with God is also like the one we have with your husband or wife. Now, for you kids, that doesn't mean as much since you're not married. But you've seen good and bad examples on TV, on Disney movies. I'm pretty sure all of you have watched Frozen at some point, And you know what a bad marriage could look like. You've also seen your parents. So you've seen relationships in marriage all over the place. So how do we use that knowledge to develop our relationship with God further? That is something we need to think about every time we really, uh, read this commandment. It's not just don't commit adultery. It's what is our relationship with God? So we have to always, for every commandment, love God and love our neighbor. Now, speaking of God's commandments and laws, it's time to learn more about God and how we can love God. So children, please join me and Miss Brandy in the media room.
pray. God of our salvation, we come to you. We want to be united in love with you and with one another. Touch us and make us whole. We give thanks for the sure word you have given to us. Open our ears to the message of your gospel. Open our hearts that we may share your renewing and cleansing love with others. Lord, we, we want to be used by you to make a difference in the lives of others. We, the need of hope, acceptance, love, compassion is great. And you are the answer to those needs. So help us to show others the way to you through our programs, our, through our ministries and missions, and most of all, through our lives and e examples. God of healing, we pray for those who are sick, suffering, lonely, misguided, and those who are in need of your presence with your healing, with your guidance, and with your peace. For those who are sick, comfort them and heal them. For those who are struggling with several issues, give them new hope and direction. May your strength, comfort, wisdom, and love be with those who are tired, in danger, in sorrow, in despair, and fear. O oh, gracious God, we confess our need to you and we turn to you with our hearts filled with hope, remembering the promises you have made to us. We pray for your church and for all who are part of it. Pour out upon us the gift of faith, hope, and love. Let us be light and salt in the world. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our healer. Amen. Offering is an integral part of the service of worship. It is our response to the word of God we recognize that God alone is the source of all that we have and all that we are, and offering is our giving back to God. Our offering will be an effective resource for God's ministry at Faith Church and beyond. Please put your offering in the offering box located in the narthex before or after the service or in the offer offering plate located in the front by the stairs during the offertory. If you are watching on Facebook Live or YouTube, please mail your offerings to Faith Church.
Please remain standing for the prayer of dedication in unison. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, give and it will be given to you. For in the same measure as you give, it will be given to you again. We give to you today as a response to your goodness to us. We ask that you receive our offerings and continue to supply all our needs. May you peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our words, your love be in our hands, and your joy be in our souls. In your mighty name, amen. You may be seated. The scripture reading for today is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 through 15 and 20. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Miranda, for the scripture reading. I'm looking forward to the, another infant baptism coming up on Easter, Easter morning. And I'm looking forward to it. And by the baptism, uh, we become a Christian and start a new life in our relationship with God. Paul writes, therefore, if anyone, anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come and the old has gone and new is here. And when Paul refers to people becoming Christians, what does he mean? The word Christian means a follower of Jesus Christ and someone who has a relationship with God through his son. There are many ways of speaking about starting the new life of the Christian faith. We can say becoming a Christian, giving our lives to Christ, receiving Christ, inviting Jesus into our lives, and believing in him and opening the door to Jesus Christ. The assurance of our relationship with God stands based on the activity of the Trinity, the God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. The promises which the Father gives us in his word and the sacrifice of the Son for us on the cross and the assurance of the Spirit in our hearts. There can be summarized as the word of God and the work of Jesus and the witness of the Holy Spirit. First, we can have faith because of the word of God, the, our knowledge of God is based on the promises in the Bible. It is based on fact, not feelings. If we are to rely on only on our feelings, we could never be sure about anything. Our feelings go ups and downs, ups and downs, depending on all sorts of factors. Promises in the Bible, which is the word of God, do not change and are totally reliable. There are many great promises in the Bible. For example, Jesus says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with, with that person and they with me. Jesus enters into our lives by the Holy Spirit. 
The artist Holman Hunt, inspired by this verse, painted the light of the world. Jesus, the light of the world, stands at the door, and the door represents the door of someone's life. This person has never ever invited Jesus to come into his or her life. Jesus is standing at the door and knocking, and he is waiting, waiting a response. He wants to come in and be part of that person's life. Apparently, someone said to Holman Hunt that he had made a mistake. They told him, you have forgotten to paint a handle on the door. Hunt replied, oh no, there is only one handle and that is on the inside. In other words, we have to open the door. We have to open the door to let Jesus come into our lives. Jesus will never ever force his way in. He gives us the freedom to choose. It is up to us whether or not we open the door to him. If we do, he promises, I will come in and eat with them and they with me. Eating together, fellowship is a sign of the friendship which Jesus offers to all those who open the door of their lives to him and to others. And second, we can have faith because of the work of Jesus. Jesus says to his disciples, I am with you always. Jesus is with us always and he promises to give his followers, give us eternal life. Eternal life is a quality of life that comes from being in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is, has many, many implications. It assures us about the past, that what Jesus achieved on the cross was effective. Resurrection is the, the proclaim, proclamation of a victory. And uh, it assures us about present, Jesus is alive, and his power is within us, within each of you, bringing us life in all its fullness. And also it assures us about future. This life is not the end. There is a life beyond the grave, beyond the death. History is moving toward a glorious climax. One day, Jesus will return to earth to establish a new heaven and new earth. Then those who are in Christ will go to be with, with, with the Lord forever. There will be no more crying and uh, no, there will be no more sin. There will be no more suffering and no more separation from loved ones then we will see Jesus face to face. We will be given glorious and painless resurrection bodies. We will be transformed into the moral likeness of Jesus Christ. Heaven will be a place of intense joy, intense delight, which goes on forever and forever and ever. The wonderful news is that our confidence in eternal life is based not on what we do or what we achieve, but on what Jesus has done for us. What he did on the cross enables us to receive eternal life as a gift. We do not earn a gift. We accept it. We accept it with gratitude. It all starts with God's love for us. For God
God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever, no matter who you are, no matter they, they are, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The prophet Isaiah foresee what the suffering servant would do for us and said, we all, like sheep, have gone astray, and each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him in, in iniquity of us all. Isaiah says that we have all done wrong. We have all gone astray. Different ways, this way, this way, different ways. There is a barrier between us and God which prevents us from experiencing his love. On the other hand, Jesus never did anything wrong. He lived a perfect life. There was no barrier between him and his father on the cross Jesus transferred our wrongdoings on, onto Jesus. That is that's why Jesus cried out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. At that moment, he was cut off from God. Not because of his own wrongdoing, but because of our, our wrongdoing. When we repent and believe, we can be sure of God's forgiveness and know our guilt has been taken away. We can also be sure that we will never be condemned. Paul says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we have eternal life. Because of what Jesus achieved for us on the cross by dying for us. And third, we can have faith because of the witness of the Holy Spirit. When we become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes to live within us and helps us to be sure of our faith in Christ. The Holy Spirit transforms us from within and produces the character of Jesus in our lives. This is called the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When the Holy Spirit comes to live within us, these fruits begin to grow and transforms us to be more loving and more joyful and more peaceful both with God and with others. And the Holy Spirit also brings, brings an inner experience of God and creates a deep deep personal conviction that we are children of God and God accepts us and loves us. We know this because the Spirit of God witnesses to us through the ongoing change in our character. Therefore, by the, great, by the work of God, word of God, and work of Jesus, and the witness of spirit, we can believe in Jesus and we can be sure that we are children of God and we have eternal life. As the children of God, we can be confident about our relationship with God. We can know his forgiveness and we can be sure that we have eternal life. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, bestow your wisdom upon us. Give us the discernment to hear your voice 
we thank you that we believe in Jesus and be sure that we are children of God and have eternal life by the word of God, the work of Jesus, and the witness of the Holy Spirit. So help us to trust you and show us what is best for you no matter what circumstances. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. be with you. Lift up your heart. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. It's right and good and joyful things always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with the people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. you and bless is your son Jesus Christ. Your spirit anoint him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim good news to the, uh, the captive, uh, captive, captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to the set of liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with the sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night on which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread. And, and gave it to his disciples and said, take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this. All of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this, your 
mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on this gift of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we can be for the world by of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and us, as we proceed sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. Now, now, Lord's table is ready. Everyone is invited to come forward to take the individual cup. After you take the cup, you may return to your pew and take a time of prayer and join in singing hymns. When everyone takes the individual cup, we will uh, take the weapon and juice at the same time. Please come.
first layer to release the wrapper. This is the body of Christ given for you. And then please open the second layer to release juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Love and care for one another in the name of Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ rest upon you. May the love of God surround you, uphold you, embrace you. May the presence of the Holy Spirit equip you and transform your heart and your mind and your spirit. As you, you listen, listen to the word of God and believe in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross and encounter the witness of the Holy Spirit within you and among you, you may be a follower of Jesus Christ and have a relationship with, with God now and always. Amen.